Uh, this is probably one or next to the last video for the Weber Square. Uh, the cabinet work is finished and soundboard restoration is finished. Um, get a quick shot of that beautiful uh, rosewood veneer. Um, there was some touch up work needed to be done to it, but uh, for the most part, you can see there, very beautiful veneer. Uh, that's closed grain finish, closed pour finish that you see there. And uh, doing that on rosewood is a little bit different than most of the other woods because of uh, an oil called tannin in the uh, in the veneer. It makes it difficult or more. Uh, I don't say difficult, but it makes it. Um, a little bit more um, time consuming, a few, a couple of extra steps involved. A little better way of saying that uh, because of the tannin and the um, wood. But uh, in any case, what I want to show you here was give you a shot of the soundboard. It's finished up. And the bridges, uh, did some work on the bridges here. Um, you see, instead of replacing the bridge on this piano, which uh, can be done, I decided to make a repair, so there's a repair done there. And uh, on here, I wanted to show this, too, something I found as I was cleaning this portion up. Um, the notes, actually, uh, on this part of the, um, on the modern pianos, this is, what you're seeing here is actually, um, it made into the plate, but on this piano, it's uh, it's wood. And I don't have a glance set up where I can show you this right now, but uh, maybe I'll do that compare and contrast a little later. In any case, uh, we have stringing scale written on grands. If modern grands, if you have the stringing scale written on it, it's going to be at the uh, bridge at the back, uh, the bridge close to the hitch pin on this piano. Um, this is the bridge closest to the hitch pin, which is on the plate, but this here would be the agraph on a modern piano or pressure bar on uprights. But in any case, what I want to show you here is, uh, as I was cleaning these, I found I kind of made a little mistake here um, in cleaning. So. Um, this is the stringing scale at number 23. You see there is the size wire for the stringing scale. And what I did is I cleaned, I left those portions there. So you got 23, 22, 21. And on down, there's 20, 19, 18 is there. 17 is there. How easy that is to see. And right here is, uh, it skips to go to 15. Oh, hard. That, that's pretty hard to see. And I'm using an Android phone, so it's, the resolution is not going to be that great. But um, when you hit down here, it's so small, it's not enough room to write. So what they did was they wrote it where the stringer could actually bend over, because the stringer, you look at the piano here. The tuning pins are at the back part of the piano. So the stringer is opposite, or say the camera is going to be looking at the stringer. So the stringer would be looking right into the camera, and uh, which is at the back of the piano. On modern day grands, it's reversed. The tuning pins are up near the keyboard. Um, but my point is here, uh, because there's no room to write, the stringer needs to see so he can pull the right string out as he's stringing the piano, the um, scale goes down here. So right here you have, let see if I have that. right here you have uh, 14. Let's see if I can get that so you can see it. Um, there's no way you can see that. Maybe you can there. Um, 14, I'll point to it, 14 is right here, right above my fingernail there. 
So it's size 14 string, and right here, um, you may be able to see above my fingernail 13, and it's upside down. So uh, you could, if you imagine the stringer, he's bending over looking at it. It's going to be right side up to him because he's bending over looking at it. So that stringer, whoever strung this piano, grabbed a stringing scale uh, from some uh, cat document or whatever, um, shop manual or whatever, and he, he wrote it down. And when he got down, he wrote it upside down. And in any case, I wanted to show that real quick. And if you didn't see the pin block in the earlier video, there's a shot of the pin block there. And um, I'm about to put the plate back in this, and I'm going to get going stringing on it, make a few adjustments here and there, a couple of things to do more. But uh, just wanted to show you that. And um, I will be uh, getting this finished up uh, pretty quickly here and, uh, and moving on to this next one here behind it, which is a Haynes square. And I'll be doing the same thing there. So I may, if I have time permits, I may get one more quick video. I don't think I'll be able to get a video with it put together because delivery is right upon us now. I may, if I have time, likely not. But uh, I've got a couple of Steinway squares I'll be doing, so um, there'll be more. There'll be plenty more to do, so I'll just keep an eye out. And um, if you have any comments, uh, you can comment right there at Beavers Piano TV on YouTube.com. And uh, also, um, uh, if you have a Twitter account, twitter.com at Beavers Piano. I'd love to hear your comments, your thoughts on these pianos, very unique pianos, and um, just look out for some more videos, and we'll talk to you again soon.